Taiko no Tatsujin is a very cool, very Japanese rhythm game for the Nintendo Switch, which has you pretending to play the drums, hitting the correct note at the correct time as per usual with rhythm games, and it's a really fun if frustrating game to play. The literal translation for Taiko no Tatsujin is Drum Master, and <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm only a master at messing up my rhythms and getting things out of time, but still, it was a really fun play. It makes a lot of sense for this to be a motion controlled game. So I ask the normal questions. Are the motion controls very effective? And could this make a good workout? The answers may surprise you. Also, the footage for this one is coming from before I moved, so yeah, it might look a little bit weird. The game works in standard rhythm game fare. The notes come from the right on a track and you try to match the correct note on the correct beat with your motions. It gets much more complicated down the line with multi-hitter notes, big booming notes that need both Joy-Cons as well as the types of note the red Don notes and the blue car notes. You can use either Joy-Con to hit these notes, as the way the game differentiates is through the motion used. There are multiple fun characters with different abilities, including some curry-based characters, and also Kirby as DLC. Was this Kirby's first appearance on the Switch? Uh... I don't know. There are a few different game modes. Taiko mode is the standard play mode where you select a song, a difficulty, and then you play through it. You need a certain amount of points and correct notes in order to clear the song, designated by the bar on top of the track. Don Katsu Fight is a crazy fun multiplayer battle mode. There are items you can hit to mess with your opponent's track, like make it go really fast or obscure it, and you whittle down your opponent's HP. Online battle is similar fare as well as party game, lots of mini games based around rhythm and listening for cues. They are all, of course, based around the same experience of drumming in time, but the variety is really nice. I especially appreciate those mini games because they do a lot to make the experience more interesting. There's a lot of really cool ones. I really liked the wood chopping game and the sushi line train. I wasn't very good at them, but that's not the point. You really have to be quite accurate, and I think that brings us quite neatly into how the motion controls do respond and how they work. Although there are multiple control schemes, we're concerned with motion here, or drumstick mode. You're introduced to drumstick mode almost immediately, and the intro is very thorough. The velocity of the motion matters, and the position of the Joy-Con is important. The standard vertical position with the L and R buttons is where you start, and swinging straight down in a line hits a Don note, whereas having a diagonal swing hits a car note. Getting these swings to go in time is imperative for high scores, and it makes the game really challenging in a mostly good way. Very occasionally these beats registered wrong for me, but for the most part it was more down to my skill. You see, I, this is where I really enjoyed it, is the fact that it's all based on your timing, and if you mess up your timing, it's not going to react properly, and then you mess up the note. It's not to do with it not registering. It registered all the notes, I just wasn't doing it that well in time. The timing might be strict, but I do think that they have done it in a very fair way. And if you think that there's a problem with the calibration, luckily for you, Taiko no Tatsujin has a wealth of calibration options to make sure that you have your audio and visual in the correct timing. It's one of those cases where the motion controls mostly do what they need because it's essentially small, uncomplicated motions. The small bumps and jolts make the motion detect well, because unlike games like Skyward Sword HD, there aren't over complications. As long as you're holding the controller right, doing the correct motion gives the correct hit. The difficulty comes from the strict timing and you've got to work really hard to get it right. Milliseconds count here, which is really cool. Apart from when you're on higher difficulties, um, I really thought that with the increased speeds I'd still be able to make it work, but you've really, really got to nail that timing. It's frustrating, but the important thing is, is that the motion controls actually do exactly what they say on the tin, which is fantastic. So I guess the question now is, could this be an effective workout? Looking at taiko drumming in real life, it can absolutely be a good exercise for you. The taiko drums are huge, and often require full body movements in order to perform. Generally, taiko players will have their bodies in either a low stance, referred to as horse stance, which is coincidentally employed somewhat in knockout home fitness, or a lunge stance, albeit this is often used for smaller drums called shimi daiko. Taiko players emphasize a transfer of power through the body, generating power with the glutes and back before transferring it across the arms and out through the hand, implying a full body workout. It's also interesting to note that these sessions are often quite long, so there's absolutely an endurance aspect of the workout here. The players don't really have sheet music, often memorizing patterns that aren't in contemporary time signatures as well. It's really, really quite interesting. So does this full body endurance aspect transfer over to Taiko no Tatsujin? In some way, yes. It can raise your heart rate at times, especially on higher difficulties or where you have the longer notes or balloons. I actually got my heart rate up to 130 at one point during this, which is, uh, yeah, yeah, really, really good. It's the fat burning heart rate zone, so not bad. 
Longer sessions could definitely create some cardio benefits, but you'd have to be very accurate and fast to do so. Playing the hard and extreme versions would facilitate this, but you'd need to build it up accuracy-wise, otherwise you're gonna fail everything. I felt myself raising my arms up and using my forearms a lot. There was supplementary work from the delts and pecs as well. I think this can definitely be effective for longer sessions with the harder difficulties, and you'd probably get more benefits if you tried to employ some things from real life taiko drumming, like the horse stance, or using your arms in a wider motion, but you would be sacrificing accuracy there, and that may be a problem conducive to the rest of the game. So it could be more useful to use smaller, more accurate notes. It's a great active session that ranks pretty high on my list of active games, and especially with the longer kind of form of gameplay and the huge, huge song variety. I mean, I didn't actually go into this, did I? But it's huge. There's, there's so many songs and that is only expanded with DLC as well. Some of it's free, some of it's paid, but look, there's something for everyone here. There's even the song from Moana. There's the, the Evangelion theme. There's, there's a couple of Pokemon themes. There's a YouTube theme song or something like that. There's so many different songs, which is really cool. So I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Um, but anyway, where was I? Yeah, so with different game modes and and a huge song variety and with speed and skill there is definitely something to be said for a low intensity to medium intensity exercise session here that does generally just focus on one body part but if you're doing it right you're holding your core in it's a decent cardio session which is really really cool not really particularly resistance but definitely could have some cardio benefits for some people i think either way here it's a decent game to pick up it's a really fun one to play on your own or it's especially good in a party situation and look it's, it's difficult to get hold of physically now so you may have to get it digitally so you know whether you want to weigh that up or not or try and get it on sale is another thing but i would definitely recommend it the song choice the motion controls are really really good and it's just it's just a well done game that makes you feel good for actually completing these harder levels uh, i really yeah you, you do feel a genuine sense of accomplishment when you manage to beat one of these hard levels plus it's a low to medium intensity cardio workout and that is cool i wonder how different it would be with the taiko no tatsujin drum controller set i was thinking about getting one of these but honestly I can't afford it for just the one video. Um, it would have been cool, but uh, yeah, it is too expensive for me for the one. So yeah, it's pretty cool, but I'm sure it changes the experience. But either way, if you're using the Joy-Cons, there's definitely some good motion controls here. So what do you think? Have you ever played Taika no Tatsujin or any of the other games, or are you planning on doing it now? Let me know in the comments below. And if there are any other motion control games that you do want to see me cover, hit me up. I have got Gal Metal coming and I'm planning on doing the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics one. But yeah, that's a little bit down the line. Should be really fun though. Anyway, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you to my patrons like I Love Waffles 1311 Rain and Sick Hippie for the amazing support they give through Patreon. If you want to check out the Patreon and get early access to review videos like this, as well as playlists for Ring Fit and any other ones, just check it out. There's some really cool stuff on there. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, Thanks for your time today. I've been Master Trainer Peter, and I'll see you soon.